ask a Republican or a Democrat what their basic premise is to their beliefs. I don't think they have the vaguest idea. They have one, and it's called pragmatism and utilitarianism and serving special interests, and they pursue that. But certainly it has no uh, resemblance to our principle of nonviolence, non-aggression. Never initiate force against our neighbor and never uh, injure or take or damage another person's property. Now, this is pretty, pretty simple because it happens to be the theme of what all civilizations is dependent on. It's the thou shalt not steal and thou shalt not kill. It's the respect for other people. Now, this is a very good principle that we all should follow and most people in the country uh, abide by it. We know that we can't steal and we can't damage other people's property and we can't hurt other people. Closely associated with this libertarian principle is one other principle that has been used throughout the history uh, of civilization, and that is the principle of voluntarism, voluntary association, voluntary contracts. People only come together when two people want to come together. No force, no coercion to make one person do something he or she does not want to do. When two people come together, whether it's economic or social, or whatever the agreement is, if it's a good old-fashioned Texas handshake or a written contract for civilization to work, that contract, that agreement has to have meaning. So therefore, we have those two closely aligned principles, non-aggression and voluntary agreements and fulfilling our promises. We had, a, we had a civil war to get rid of slavery. We have substituted that form of slavery with a new form of slavery involving with the social system and the social security and the welfare state and the warfare state. It is therefore beho behooven to us to change all that and to release the slaves. The one thing that is very important, though, there has never been in the history of mankind a slave revolt. That doesn't happen. What usually happens is that men of principle who are free free the slaves and then they join the revolution. We have also come to this hallowed spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. This is no time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or to take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Now is the time to make real the promises of democracy. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time to make justice a reality for all of God's children. It would be fatal for the nation to overlook the urgency of the moment. This sweltering summer of the Negro's legitimate discontent will not pass until that is an invigorating autumn of freedom and equality. And so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Good evening, everyone. I am very honored and privileged to be here, and I'm not surprised that students have put together this debate. I want to thank the Texas Union Student Issues Committee and also the Black Student Alliance. I am the independent presidential candidate who speaks for the black agenda. I want to begin by telling you something about where my campaign comes from so that you will understand not only what I am doing but where I am going. This campaign has emerged out of a close to 20-year dialogue 
in the black community on the need for an alternative to the political parties of white corporate America. Uh, obviously, there are some things that I'm sure uh, Dr. Filani and I are going to agree on. If, 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 we have something in common. It looks like we came from the same state, Pennsylvania. That's, uh, we have that in common. And I think both of us can agree that we're not satisfied with the candidates that we have. And therefore, we believe, I'm sure, together that the American people deserve some other choices. And I think that's where our problem is today. And I think if individuals like ourselves, who certainly will have disagreements on how uh, the system of government ought to be run and what kind of a country we should have, at least we can agree that it's in the best interest of our country to allow the American people to have more than one choice. I have come to the conclusion, as many others have, that there's really not any difference between the two parties. And, and let me ask you, I mean, you've been answering a lot of questions lately about uh, the newsletters that were published under your name, and some of the things contained in them were conspiracy theories, some of them, some of them are considered racist, and you've, you know, you've disavowed them. Um, completely. But they were called the Ron Paul Report. And did you read them at all when they were when they were published during those years? Did you ever sort of take a look at it and say, you know what, this isn't what I stand for? Not all the time. But you did read them? Not all the time. Well, well on occasion, yes. And did you ever object when you read them? Well, you know, we, we talked about this twice yesterday, has CNN have. Why don't you go back and look at what I said yesterday on CNN and what I've said for 20-some years. is 22 years ago. I didn't write them. I disavow them. That's it. But you made money off of them. I was still practicing medicine. That was probably why I wasn't a very good publisher, because I had to make a living. But there are reports that you made almost a million dollars off of them in, in 1993. Oh, who, who, I'd like to see that money. But would you give it back? If you made money off to of them and you disavowed, well, I, if, charity, if, charity, if you made money no, off of them and you disavow it. You know, I, di I didn't write them and I don't endorse those views and I've explained it many times. So you read them, but you didn't do anything about it at the time. I never read that stuff. I never, I've never read it. I came up, I, I was probably aware of it 10 years after it was written. And it's been going on 20 years that people have pestered me about this, and uh, CNN does it every single time. So well, when are you going to wear yourself I mean, out? When you say it's a, no, but when are you, you know, do that? Is it legitimate? I mean, is it a legitimate question to ask that something yeah. went out and when under you get your the name? And when so you get the answer, it's legitimate that you uh, sort of take the answers I get. You know what the answer is? I, I didn't read, write them. I didn't read them at the time, and I disavow them. That is the answer. But you made money off of it. Uh, if you know, if you know, I made money on it. You know more about my finances than I do. Uh, I, I think you're really confused on that. Okay. Well, it's just a question. I mean, it's legitimate. It's it's legitimate. These things are pretty incendiary. You know, the because I, of people like you. No, 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 no. <laughs> Come on. Some of the stuff was very incendiary, and you know, saying that in in 1993 the Israelis were responsible for the bombing of the World Trade Center, that kind of yeah. stuff. Goodbye. All right, all right. Thank you, Congressman. I appreciate your answer. I appreciate your answering the questions, and you understand it's our job to Thank answer. You. Thank you. You don't? Okay. Well, I understand that, uh, how the system works. I understand that, uh, how the system works.